Martin, thank you for being with us today. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So you've spent many years uh, working in the foreign exchange markets, a very deep understanding of Wall Street. You have an in-depth understanding of both the world's markets, psychology, and techniques of traders. Martin, tell us a little bit more about your background. Yeah, I've worked in a lot of places. Um, I've worked all over the world, basically London, Tokyo, Moscow, Warsaw, shouting and waving my arms around, doing all the stuff that you do in dealing rooms. And then as time went by, I did a short time as a financial advisor for a major Wall Street firm. Found that a bit constrictive, to be honest, and ended up just through accident, through a, an accidental process, writing for, for NASDAQ. Martin, in fact, you just published an article on NASDAQ where you articulated a very compelling case for investments in small cap stocks and you look through the lens of Bob Farrell and his principle of market mean reversion. In a sentence or two, tell our viewers, what is market mean reversion? Well, it just means that in markets, everything does revert to the mean, to use that same phrase, meaning that if something's been outperforming for a while, it will probably pull back. And if something's been underperforming for a while, it will almost certainly do well for a while. Martin, elaborate on the factors that make this moment uh, particularly ripe for investing in small caps? Well, I think it's to do with the underperformance. People are worried about underperformance over the last, I would say, probably the last five years. But in actual fact, if you if you drag out a chart and you look at small caps versus large caps over the last 20 or 25 years, there's a massive outperformance. If you just take the ETFs, IJR, the largest small cap ETF, has outperformed SPY, the S&P 500 tracker, since 2000. By, uh, it's almost doubled the return. And, and that's going to happen again. So the fact that there's been some underperformance is actually makes this time an opportunity to invest in small caps, not a reason not to. Makes perfect sense to me. Talk to us about market cycles and how investors can better understand and navigate them, um, and particularly when they're focused on small cap stocks. Yeah, I think we are programmed as individuals to do things the wrong way. It's one of the first things you learn in a dealing room is that as people, we are inclined to ignore the, you know, to, to ignore the bad things and want to join in with the good things. That's great in life, but it's terrible in trading or investing. In trading or investing, you have to do it the other way around. When things are going bad, you know, Warren Buffett's famous phrase and all of that, when things are going bad, that's the time you need to get involved. And when things are going good, it's maybe time to pull back a little bit. And if you, if you put that in the context of small cap versus large cap stocks, now's the time to be in small cap, right? Because there is this inevitable cyclicality and, and we're at this point now and we're heading towards this point. And it may not come tomorrow and it may not come next week and it may not come next year, but it's coming and you need to take advantage of it now and, and then ro ride with the inevitable flow of markets. Well said. Now, are there any recent developments that either reinforce or, or challenge this view? Yeah, I think that current market conditions, everybody's obsessed with what the Fed's going to do, which is understandable. It's important right now and everything. But but rates have spiked quite sharply from a, a ultra low levels, historic lows. And that feels to people like it's going to be disadvantageous to small caps because inevitably smaller companies' interest rates are, are a little more interest rate sensitive. And so the feeling is that's bad. But what we've actually done is revert, again, if you look at a reversion to the mean, we're back to kind of long-term averages, if that. There's still a move, though, within the next year or so for rates to be cut back again. As that happens, again, that's a plus in everybody's mind for small caps. You need to be in front of that move. You need to be there now when everybody's kind of humming and hawing before that actually happens. I agree. Uh, you know, we've seen a number of... Uh significant moves uh, uh, on our red chip stocks just over the last couple of months. And so I, I agree with you, small caps are back in play. But let me ask you, how do investors sort of minimize the risk of small caps? Because as you know, uh, many of them don't work out. And so do you have any particular strategy on how you look at a small cap stock? Yeah, let's get, let's get one thing out of the way first, and I'll jump on one of my hobby horses very quickly. Risk and volatility are two different things. 
Financial advisors are taught to tell you it's the same thing, that if something's volatile, it is therefore risky. But that's not true. There was far more risk investing in treasuries five years ago or three years ago when rates were essentially at zero than there was in buying a small cap biotech stock that had potential. The, the, the small cap biotech would be more volatile, but it was volatile in an upward trend, whereas there was no upward path for, for bonds when interest rates were at zero. So bearing that in mind, but there is that volatility and there is some risk associated with small caps. But like all things investing and trading, diversification is your friend. You have to embrace that volatility. And the way to do that is if you put all your eggs in one basket and something goes wrong, of course, it's terrible. So you don't. But the potential of small caps is such that you only need one or two out of 10 to go your way. So my strategy would be to diversify multiple stocks and to actually be disciplined about the ones that don't go as planned. You, you, you can't just sit there forever and wait until it goes to zero. You have to have a point at which you're going to get out of that and say, okay, I'll rethink it. I'll come back to it later. Just take the emotion out of it. Cut yourself out and go. The others that are working, let them go. It's, it's the oldest trading adage there is, you know, cut your losses and run your profits and you'll still have a job next week. Well, that's an excellent overview. I always say buy small cap stocks in bunches, a cornucopia of, of stocks if you're going to play in the smaller cap uh, uh, space because it is the riskiest asset class. So I think your strategy is very sound. Uh, I want to close with, are there any industries that you like in the smaller cap space or any stocks? Um, individual stocks at the moment, I, there's a couple of bits and pieces. My main focus right now, because I'm looking for areas where there is enormous growth potential, um, obviously the tech side to a certain extent, there's lots of AI related plays out there. Um, and, but, but I, the, where I look most of all tends to be in the biotech and healthcare sector, where there are just enormous advances taking place that, that can change people's lives, um, and for the better. And um, I, I know you, you kind of feel this way too. One of the big pluses of investing in small caps is that you can be an agent of innovation yourself. You can, you can drive these things forward. And when these things actually save people's lives and make people's lives better, that's something that you can do. When I first started in the Forex market, I was told by my boss that I would find the hardest thing was that the only thing we made was money. And that can be hard for some people, but there's no reason why you can't do good while you make money. And, and and that's why I kind of tend to look at the moment more at biotech than anything else. But, you know, that's me. It's not for everybody. And Martin, I appreciate your insights. Uh, look forward to having you back on the show soon. Uh, have a great day out there. Thanks. You too. Good luck.